So today we're looking at the top five best players in each position, starting off with the goalkeepers. Now, I don't think these are going to change for any time, to be honest. The only time these do change is if we see like uh, kind of last year or the year before with the 99 Pope, whether we get a 99 Donnarumma, 99 probably Neuer, I'd say, is the only other one. I don't think there's many keepers that will reach a 99. Maybe Edison, if he was moving to uh, the Saudi, he could have potentially got one of them. But other than that, I feel like these are going to be the standard. I don't think there's much of a difference across the board, to be honest. Uh, I think you just pick your most favoured position. Uh, goalkeeper and that's really about it i personally like schmeichel i think van der sar's got to be up there in the top three i've been really liking check i think he's a decent keeper but i've seen so many people not actually like him which is fair enough i suppose where when it comes to goalkeepers everybody has their own style and sometimes check just doesn't fall into that in a lot of people's opinions, but I do think he's a decent option regardless. I'd send then I'd then probably go Casillas and Martinez. If you're looking for coins to improve your team, head over to lootbar.gg for the most reliable and also the best coins around. Also, they have incredible 24-hour manual customer service that you physically cannot find anywhere else. But before finishing on lootbar.gg, make sure you are using JT11 to get 8% off coupon. Once you've gone through the payment, you'll be able to get your coins within the next 24 hours absolutely guaranteed also with the code you'll be able to get five percent more coins on every transaction make sure you do click the link either in the description or down in the comment section below but then swiftly moving on into the center backs i don't really want to talk about keepers too much we've obviously got a huge amount of players and normally what i'll do is i'll kind of go for the very basics of a top five maybe top ten and possibly in the new FIFA in FC 25, we might kind of start, go with a list of the top 20 and keep that up to date because then it gives you an option across the board just because I can kind of do the, the, the ones where we have the bog standard bargain bucket, we have the medium tier, and then these are obviously the top of the top. These are going to be mostly the most expensive center backs in the game because that is how a market works. You look at a Virgil, it's coming in at 9 mil, Saliba at 2.4, Rio Ferdinand at 2.9, we go a bit further down for 1.2 for Ruben, and then 2.9 for Militao. You do have like a 1.4 Vidic there who would definitely be scraping into that top. Uh, 10 I'd say but the top five is very much of an elite category now Virgil obviously sits top on this one I don't think there's any arguments there he is broken beyond all belief he's always been broken the past three four years of having him at Liverpool he's been absolutely disgusting in the game because he's just that good they've coded him that well and he will remain that well as well so spoiler alert Virgil is what you're looking for in FC 25 again Rio Ferdinand with this upgrade has had a massive, massive jump. 98 rated, still waiting on that final 99 goalkeeper, 99 left back, or a 99 centre back to finish off the 99 rated team, especially with Frimpong adding himself in. So I can imagine this final week is going to be the availability of a 99 rated team. But we still have a lovely Saliba, a great Diaz, and also a Militao. Now, if I was kind of ordering these, I'd probably go now. Virgil, Rio, Saliba, Militao, and Diaz. I think that would be my order now. Um, Diaz is one of them ones I think just needs an overhaul. I could see him with the 99 rated card, giving himself the anticipate, maybe changing out the bruiser for it, giving him a five-star weak foot if it makes that much of a difference, and just boosting up that dribbling and pace that little bit more to really warrant him being that 98, 99 rated card. But I think every option you've got, and even the options that we've got down here. Vidic is a great option. Arejo is a great option. Kunate, Stones, Company, another phenomenal option. I think he's brilliant, but it was the fact that they gave him incisive pass and quick step really just deterred me off this card, to be honest. Alaba, never a bad option for a centre-back. And then you go a bit further down to Bastoni, Gomez. These are all not bad cards. Even Benussi at this point is still worth looking at if you haven't got one of these like these are not easy to pack by any means so that is kind of what we're looking at in the kind of top five and five through to ten as such and then we hit into some left backs some absolutely quality left backs we've got now i am waiting for that 99 like we said we've had a grimaldo so we know it's not going to be him rolfo has been upgraded to the max which we absolutely love 
whether we saw her as a 99 with a 5-5, I think the problem we've got at this point with her now, when she was in her fantasy, was it? Or was it a different card? There, there was a card that she had. Which one did she have? A uh, fantasy, yeah. So her fantasy obviously got the full upgrade. She was fantastic in that center mid roll. I think that one was quite an easy one. But now we've got her here. I don't think she warrants the center mid. She has got unbelievable stats. Like obviously the, the whole across the board is fantastic. But the midfield options we have now are far superior compared to when we had fantasy. There was a lot more of a harder decision to make in that midfield. Whereas I do think she could do a job there. I just think as a left back, she actually suits it pretty well. She's an all round sort of game style. Like kind of Grimaldo now, there's, there's everybody with them stats. Like everybody's got 19 above. So it's, even though she's definitely got higher distributed stats, it's not unheard of anymore. Like we look at a Furlan Mendy now, maxed out pace, 92 shooting, as well as passing dribbling, defending at 91. They are considerably lower. I'm not saying they are massively um, the same, but there is definitely a catch up with everybody else now in comparison to what we saw during fantasy. So again, with these left backs, I think you could definitely argue between the two of them. I'm personally a big Furlan Mendy fan in this. I, I do think Teo, to be honest, does take the number one spot. And I could see him being the first 99. It's just whether they really take him to there yet. I'm hoping they do because that would complete the circuit. But I'd go Teo. I'd go Mendy. I'd then possibly go... It would be a toss-up between Rolfo and Davies, and then it would be Grimaldo for me. Um, again, all great options. There is some more with Sakina, who potentially could get another big upgrade. Kamen Vingers definitely up there. You can technically put Frimpong in the left-back role. I personally wouldn't. You've got Teo's uh, team of the season still. Cap de Villa's definitely up there. You've got Alaba that can play in there as well. DeMarco is a left mid left back. And then Nuno Mendes, another cracking option. And that's not even to mention a Roberto Carlos yet. The right backs have definitely got better. I still think there's definitely room for improvements. Whether we see another Walker upgrade, we might potentially see Navas, and there's definitely a few others that will go over as well. But I do think Frimpong is the obvious number one. I don't think anybody's got any 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 uh, debate with that one. 99 rated, a cracking upgrade for him. Decent play style pluses. Stats across the board are decent enough. We then throw in a Carfu, always nice. Walker has been phenomenal. He's been holding that top spot for quite some time. And I have said... As soon as Frimpong gets his upgrade, because it was naturally going to happen, Walker would have to step down. I do think Walker is still a number two, in my opinion. I'd then be looking at maybe like Carfu into James, into Navas. I think that order can definitely change. And again, with the right backs, there's the likes of Carvajal still. We've got ourselves a Rejo can play there. You go further down, you've got Klaus. Great option as well. Um, Gomez, not so much. Trent Alexander-Arnold, never, never a bad option. I do wish he kind of was that 5-5 five, five and put in the middle a little bit more. Whether we see that in footies, it would be a nice little change. I don't think we're possibly going to get Shapeshifter at this point, but it kind of is what it is. Even Kimmich didn't have necessarily a bad card. It just never really stood out amongst all of the team of the tournaments. Dumfries as well with a lovely footies card. Again, it's kind of objective based. So you, you kind of know what you're getting for it. But I think when it comes to the top five, they are definitely in that, that top quality. Moving on into some CDMs then. And this is a very vital position. And we've got two of my, well, three, in fact, of my most favorite players in that position. Goretzka, I think you could argue as a box-to-box, -to, -box, to be honest. But I do like him more as a holding DM that pushes the ball up slightly. But not as much as somebody like a Bellingham or a DePaul. They, they kind of really take it that next level. With all of the defending play style pluses slash passing for Goretzka, I love him sitting in between because I know I've got a very, very safe option for him. Whereas I do think the other four are predominantly more based around the kind of DM role. Vieira definitely can carry both. And same with Yaya Toure. Valverde's got the rapid plus. Kevin Vinga's probably one of the ones that I would say is more of the, the absolute pinnacle of holding. You can potentially shift him to a left back as well. And there's so many options as a more defensive mid you could go with. I think when you look at the arguments between somebody like a Benton Cure, he's kind of now got the ability to push forward as well. 5-4 on him. 
decent card. Um, obviously, we've got Johnny Stones that can go into that DM role as well as center back. I think he definitely suits more of a center back. You've got Rodri. I think he's always an option, but he, again just lacks that overall game now and this is where midfielders go and it, it blurs the lines a little bit when it comes to a solid dm a box to box and a cam because everybody has 90 stats across the board so it's it's not as if any one defender like we look at if we go for instance um who would i go with it's probably more cam and Vinger to be honest i think valverde definitely uh, kind of started off more box to box but cam and Vinger is a solid dm that is kind of what his traits are Kind of the same as the Chuamene as well. I think he could be mentioned massively. But when we look at the stats, like the 98 defending, the 93 physical, but then he's got the 97 dribbling, 96 passing, and 93 shooting. You could argue he could go up and down the pitch and be absolutely fine. So there is that argument at foot is where most of the midfield can do it. You'll find more in the cams, more so than anything, that they maybe can't defend as well. But shooting just seems to be one of them things every midfielder can do, to be honest. If I was ordering these, I think I'd go Vieira, Yaya, Valverde, Kamenvinger, and then Goretzka, which then leads us into the box to boxes. Now, I think this is the most impressive set. I do like the CDMs and cams, but when you've got a Bellingham, who this year has been phenomenal, like obviously, EA are going to hype up their ambassadors. Of course they do. It's it's a very cheat code in the game. If you've got an ambassador, you know full well they're getting the biggest upgrade. They're going to be the most in-game efficient player that you can physically find. You then find a Hullet, who is Hullet. If you've played the game for more than three years, four years, you know full well that that card is just broken in itself. Then we throw in a few of the new ones. Enzo with a 99, I think was absolutely wonderful. I'd actually pimp him just a little bit above DePaul, to be honest. De Jong is just perfect in that position. The 5-5, anticipate, press proven, technical, into the incisive. I just like his body type, how he works as a box-to-box, -box, more so than DePaul. I think DePaul is the only one that I'd say is missing out on the shout here for a top five contender. There's obviously more center mids, like you've got Bon Matty, McAllister is a very big surprise in this position, Tony Cruz, uh, Gerrard's obviously up there, you throw in Rice is more DM, Fabian Ruiz, not a bad card, I don't put him in top five. Uh, like I say, Goretzka, you could argue, Modric is brilliant, but again, I don't think top five worthy. Putieus, incredible absolutely brilliant 99 i knew full well she was going to get one from team of the year to team of the season she has been absolutely magnificent and this card is another tremendous upgrade for her but i do think for my listing bellingham would have to be number two hullet would be number one i'd then go putieus i'd go de Jong, and then i'd go into enzo and then probably someone like de paul would be very close on that six now, in terms of cams, we've got some wonderful players here. Musiala, love him as a 98. I was kind of hoping we'd see him as a 99, but at the minute, we're not seeing really any team of the tournaments that have gone into footies as of yet. I am just double-checking because I cannot remember. Um, so, Ericsson, no. Fabian, no. Teo, no. Bruno, I don't think there's been one that has gone into a footies as of yet, we've still got a, a week four to go. And I want to say into Copper America, I'm pretty sure none of them have been footies as well. I'm pretty sure everybody, that's their highest rated card if they've hit the team of the tournament. It's like, for instance, I don't see Messi getting another 99. And the same with Verts as well. So I do think they are kind of solidified themselves there. Same with the greats of the game. We've only seen some of the lower ones hit a footies as well. Whether we see a 99 Zidane, there's still many, many weeks to go. But we normally only get four teams of footies, whether we get more. That's not to been confirmed or denied at this point. We could see it going on for the rest of the game. Or we could see the preseason take it in a different direction. But when it comes to these cams, they obviously can play multiple positions. You could you could put a lot of them on left or right wing, to be honest. I think everybody, every one of them has got an attribute in that attacking zone. For instance, the three in the middle. I could see Zidane as a centre forward. Maybe a striker, but I don't think he's got that striker mentality. I'd go Cam or centre forward. Maybe even a cheeky centre mid. Definitely with Pele and Messi, they could both play left wing, right wing, striker, Cam, centre forward. Musiala and Verts, I'd say Cam, centre forward, 
potential wingers. Both of them have got a, a pace attribute. I don't think they could play striker as efficient as some of the strikers we've got. But when it comes to actual cam abilities, these are some of the best of the best. You'd obviously go a toss-up between one and two and Messi and Pele, depending on how you prefer it. I'd then be looking at Zidane, Wurtz, and then personally, I'd go Musiala then. I think De Bruyne is a very close six and seven potential, but the options of a cam, there is many, many that you could choose. Even someone like a Lo Celso, who is very cheap, is up there in the top of them. We then have the left wings. Now, these are some of the most beautiful left wings we've ever got, and four of them are Brazilian, which is no, no shock, really. When it comes to Ribery, I think he's a fantastic upgrade. I think you've got the arguments of a Rashford. There's a few right wings that could obviously play left wing as well. I think Saka's one of them. Georgie Best is. There's there's a lot that can kind of go between the two of them. I don't think none of the top five could play right wing, to be honest. But when you're looking at the top four at the minimum, you're looking at Neymar, Ronaldinho, Rivaldo and Vinny. It's, it's an obvious quadruple there. All of them are absolutely brilliant. Neymar is obviously the first to get the 99. Ronaldinho is very nostalgic, but I could still see a potential 99 footies come because there's no 5-5 five five for him. The play style pluses are a little bit off, let's be real. I, I like the finesse, that's an obvious. A quick step's good, but dead ball, I'm not fussed with him. And also Trickster, I get that he probably always will have Trickster, but... I would love it to come off as well and, and kind of go into some different avenue for him. Rivaldo was a brilliant upgrade during the greats of the game. Fantastic to get to that 98. Vinny's Vinny is really having a great season this year. I could see him getting a 99 footers at some point. I think for me, the last three at the moment, Mbappe obviously needs to get one. I do think Vinny needs one and Bellingham. They they seem to be the ones that you would kind of categorize as a 99. It was always Ronaldo, Messi, Haaland, Mbappe. I think Vinny's obviously putting himself in the name and same with Bellingham as well. So I do see them coming at some point. Whether they do is the big question. We don't know the final amounts of, like I say, the re remainder of footies, what's after footies, how many new cards are we truly going to get. But I do think when it comes to the ordering of these... I'd go Ribery 5, I'd go Rivaldo 4, Vinny 3, and I'd possibly, just because at the moment we need the upgrade for Ronaldinho, he's going to have to take second place, and obviously Neymar being the 99 would take the top spot there. If we went a few weeks back, the right wings didn't look terrible, let's be real, they, they didn't look incredibly bad. But they definitely weren't as good as the left wing. And you think about it, most of them left wings since Team of the Tournament, we had every one of them. Neymar had a different version that would be in there, but he's now got the 99, which is fantastic. The right wings had Saka, and then you'd have a lower version of Jarzinho. Best one in the question. Team of the season, Dembele was there. Team of the year, Team of the season, Hanson was there. But the final upgrades now, a 99 Hanson, 98 Dembele. 98 on the best and Jairzinho as well and Saka still holding his own there as well is absolutely marvellous. I think all of them have got a complete package now. Like we're looking at 5.5s, five we're looking at very high end. I'm surprised that we haven't seen a 99 or 98 Sala yet. Whether that is to come in week 4, I don't know if they're going to go all out. It seemed to be in week 3 they really stepped up the measures of, of ratings. I could see week four being a decent amount of 98s and 99s. So Salah is definitely within question there. When it comes to all of these, obviously you do have a 98 Garincha as well, who is obviously up there in, in any aspect. He's a free card. You get him from the season. And I think there is more people with him now because obviously you can play games and get XP. But we are pretty much now at the point where a few people are starting to get Haaland if you've grinded the game a little bit. But Garincha is definitely within reach. When it comes to these though... I think it's quite an easy one that for me, Dembele is just unbelievable. He will always be number one. I've loved him from the gold card into that team of the season. Hansen has to be second. She is crazy good. Again, from her gold card into the team of the year, the many informs, the team of the season. She's been absolutely perfect on that right wing. I'd then go Jarzinho, Saka, Best. Best, unfortunately for me, has just been... Not necessarily a letdown, because I do think he's good. I like the base version. I thought that was a nice introduction. The team of the year for how expensive he was, 
I thought could have been cheaper. I, I didn't think he was all that. And the 98 is very good, but I expected a little bit better. Not going to lie. Now, when it comes to strikers, we have so many. Like, we have the obvious number number ones like that. That's, that's an easy one. But when you look at the sheer amount of strikers that you can use outside them top fives, Sammy Kerr, 99, Pushgas, who was free, Dalglish, uh, you could even, I suppose you could even go Rivaldo. You've got Alvarez, Nunez as an SBC, Jonathan David. You've got, uh, keep further down, Martinez 98, Eto SBC, Sophia Smith is obviously up there. Um, you could even throw in a cheeky Pele there. I think that's not, not without a shadow there. Harry Kane, a little bit less. I think he's still very good, but could definitely do with the upgrade. We go a bit further down. Depay, Di Natale, Colo Moane, still very good. Let alone a Thierry Henry. You've then got a Griezmann, who is fantastic in this game. You could throw in a cheeky Rashi at a striker as well. Then you go a bit further. Kaka was very good in his upgrade. Dybala, more center forward. Lawan great option. Timo Werner is an SBC, but when it comes to the strikers, there's always a set amount, and I don't think it's any surprise. Mbappe is, is an obvious number one. R9 is definitely an obvious number two. Then you could argue between the three of them left, but for me, it would always have to be CR7 as number three, especially at that 99 version. I'd then argue that Haaland's took over Cruyff. I think the Rapid Plus, Finesse, Press Proven, and Aerial... I don't know if they meant to really add that card to the season pass because that is one of the most broken cards we have ever had in a season pass. Even in an objective, potentially SBC if it wasn't a card that was already out. So like an R9 SBC wouldn't be broken as much as that card because we've already got him on the market. That is The only way to get this 99 Haaland is a season objective. So a free card like that is just nuts. And then obviously Cruyff puts himself. I absolutely love Cruyff this year. Again, the 5-5 five five from the, the very bog standard base into the Galazzo, the Thunderstruck, this version. He is just, it's Cruyff. He's a 5-5 five five genius when it comes to being a striker. So I'd go Mbappe, R9, CR7, Haaland, and Cruyff. Let me know if you agree, disagree, who's in your top five, and I'll catch you all for the next one. Make sure you subscribe. Peace.